Hey, we are Hamlin Shaker. Yes, we are. And you're watching Slap Scene. Okay. We live in France now, but we, when we leave, we won't be living in France. We'll be living in that place. Yeah. So we don't really live anywhere. We're living like in our bags at the moment, and I've been for like the last four years. Yeah. And our company's French, so our uh, our major booking agent for the world that runs everything through them is called Pierre Prod. That's French from Dijon. Then there's Les Arvif, That's our publisher, or as you say, editor. Uh, he's from Paris, and then the label, uh, Defy, is from Red. Right. So the whole company's French. We normally use uh, Italian uh, sound and tour manager. It's a nice eclectic group. Yeah. Yeah! You shake boys back in town. Hey, move shake. Hey, move shake. That's the name. Position, John. Never in the way. Yeah, completely is beautifully random as you want it to be. He caught up to me playing golf. You make stuff, Because I was slow at golf. I was having a good day. And then we met, it was cool, it was nice. We were both English in New Zealand. You don't hear the accent so much. When you do, you get a bit excited and you can share some old stories. And then when we did, he had the guitar. We dropped a tune. It was instantly very cool. You get to me. Who do you think you are? We got work to do, boy. You said I could play on the drum. Come on, you got the beat, folks. Everybody likes the beat, bar. But that's when I was, I'd, that's after I'd met Crow, so I was beatboxing myself. So I was doing my own like beatbox, loop station, guitar thing. Fucking beatboxing at wet t-shirt competitions, pouring water all over the girls, <laughs> dropping a beat, getting paid 500 notes. Fucking loving it, mate. Get a phone call from my friend. Excuse me, mate, are you stealing my set? I was like, no, mate. Just <laughs> got this video online, like check the video out, and it's him fucking doing my set bit for bit. And I was like, who is this fucking dude? And they come up, we're like, Balkan. <laughs> and you call him, and you like, want to give him a bit of a bollocking, you know, just be like, yeah, man, you could have called. You could have called and said, hey, I'm nicking your shit. But as soon as you pick up the phone, there's this like little gap, because he's calling from Australia. I am A! And you're like, I am A! So I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really go crazy or anything. It's like covering Wonderwall, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like covering Wonderwall. It's like Wall. just doing Oasis covers, so we're all doing Dave yeah. Crow covers. Yeah. But we've got fucking companies that fucking chase people about that shit now, right? Yeah, watch it, you guys. One, two, three, four. <laughs> We don't really return to the street to play music because we haven't got time, our egos are too big and uh, mainly our egos are too big. To yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say point number two was fair. Like, I've been, I've been back to playing the street when I've been really skint, but it's, it's a real... It's a great school, it's, it's the best place, there's no hardship about the street, it's just going back to the street. Yeah. It's like what we're creating and trying to go for here, it's like that won't help this at all. But what it would help is making us less pussies than we are. Maybe there's something in that. Yeah. With my movement and the beatbox, they're completely symbiotic. I. I need the beats to make the movements, and I need the movements to make those beats. Sometimes I don't need a movement for a beat because it's the most natural sound I have, but I can choose other movements to accentuate that sound. And this is now, it's all mashed up into, into one. But to be still on stage is real difficult. those grabs of culture that we've now combined into one entity which is the band Tame and Shaker. I think it's very positive 
and I think it is part of the success. But it's really, I think, the reason it is successful because, and why it's successful within this parameter that you've created is because of the amount of cultural perspective that that brings to one idea. Yeah. It's unquestionable that more perspective helps the idea. And if you're going further around the world to find the finest of different points, you put all that in a pot, it's, it's going to taste really, really good. Like a potpourri. Like a potpourri. <laughs> Just like potpourri. Or paella. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a rolling. Yeah. <laughs> If you're using our first album as a reference point, as our first album, we didn't actually know how to write songs. So we just kind of went into the studio for a few days and then pumped out some jams. And then they were the title tracks for the album that was written. Whereas like with this album, we've had a lot of time to sit on these tracks. Um, just because our touring schedule has been so intense for like the last two years. So we've really had the opportunity to kind of run these tracks through like hundreds of people and at the same time perfect them to something with also um, an idea of creating a marketable product whereas the, when we first started this we came from the street and we literally went from the street to the stage and there was no transitional period and like I think a lot of other groups have the opportunity to sit in a room and go through songs but because of our lifestyle we weren't able to we weren't able to do that, it just kind of, right, you're playing now, okay, but you're playing in front of people, so there's no time to say, oh, for that bit, do it like this, do it like this, it was just like, right, this is a blues in E, so yeah. let's just do that, and if it finds itself with, uh, with an idea that kind of develops in the performance, then we'll go with that, but at the same time, it wasn't uh, scripted, and now we've had the opportunity to kind of script that just through us actually gaining some form of education around like writing music as opposed to just playing music. So your description is perfect, it's like our last album is as primal as it gets. It's two guys and a load of microphones and we just did it, printed it and gave it. And now we've been on the road for years and formulating ideas of these songs and now finally they're on an album. So the diversity of genre is is magnificent compared to the previous album. The clarity of the sounds, the tones, the, the maturity. But yeah, so on this one it's stuff like um, Feel Love with the strings, there's Best of My Love, which is a bit funky. Strings I Love You, uh, what else is that? Heavy in Love. Uh, it's Heavy Grip, we changed the name. I know, we changed the name because we couldn't have so many songs with the word love in it. We looked at the back of the album where we were like, fuck it, that was a lot of songs with the word love in it. <laughs> uh, heavy Love. Heavy Grip? Fucking Grip. Yeah, man. <laughs> Three Loves. Sound. Yeah. You can't have four loves on the back of your fucking album. No. Who are you, Robbie Williams? <laughs> ah, hey, Mum Shaky, here we are. I've got a little message for you. Message of love. Love. That's right, John. We discussed it a lot about additional music on the album, and we really felt that the songs on the album needed this to, to, to give the kind of energy that we create on stage on the album. Yeah. And so we um, did, and I think that when we play on stage, I think it's equal in its energy. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, the discussion was big, and with everybody, and continuously talking about it. We don't want to introduce new people to the band yet, but we do want to introduce um, more compositions on the albums, yeah. just to bring out the songs. <laughs>
they suggested a producer, and we went with that, and we we're very like pleased with the results. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, we worked with, and they suggested the studio, and we were very pleased with the suggestion of studio. But it was written in the contract that we have full creative control over everything, and continue pushing that yeah. the whole time, to the point where we even said that we. Uh, didn't want anyone to come to the studio. We were like, we don't have a lot of time, we know what we need to do, so why don't you just not come? And they were like, we totally see where you're coming from, but maybe it's nice just to be there for different perspective. They promised that they would stay out, that they would just come in every now and again to listen to how things are going. And there was just one, there was one moment where Jerome, uh, the label boss, uh, he came in, we were working on the fifth song. Which was Voodoo Blues, which is a, uh, it's like a, like a weird C minor chord. It's, it's, that's kind of based around like a, it's kind of got a, like a glitchy feel to it. It's a really nice song, but we just weren't on that page. No, we it's like it, eerie we? blues, and like I fucking love this tune, and for me it was top five in the album. We start going at it, and then Jerome comes in, and it's the first time that he's uh, he came in, and he's like, "I don't get it." And I was like, and I was like, no, 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 and after, and he said, "Okay, okay." He fucked off. We worked on it for three more hours. We went for a cigar. We gotta stop. <laughs> and so we. Uh, it wasn't we, even three hours, was it? It's about two hours in total. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And oh. it's a simple. It's C minor. You I know what I mean? Yeah, the Bling, tune. Whole chord, whole song, C minor. But the the vibe was out, <laughs> and he was right, and it was cool to have him there. We didn't waste any time. But there's no manipulation, no weird conversations, no uh, guidance. Yeah, cool, respect, and knowledge, guidance. guidance and knowledge. And you just come in and we'd be like, this is fucking 60% of the song. You come in like, fat. And then he'd leave. We had everyone from the label come down, the, the boss, the label boss. We had a publisher come down. We had the whole family were in and out, in and out, discussing everything. And everyone was super respectful. Honestly, if I wrote it in a book, People would think that it was bullshit because it doesn't happen in the industry. We were able to develop and grow our sound uh, organically and harmoniously with our partners without feeling as though we're being closed into creating something which is immediately a finished product because it's not a finished product what we're creating at the moment it's 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 a growing product and like we've already started working on uh, ideas for the future and it's and we're still developing our abilities with our instruments um, you put a lid on that shit we don't have a very long sell by day yeah it's it's kind of like, yeah, you're going to make this kind of sound now. And like, we can write pop songs, like we had a bit of a crack yeah, about a year ago. But it fucking kills us, didn't it? Oh, it's horrid. It's yeah. really horrid. Because we're just like really open-minded, let's try everything. Because we don't, we're not masters of writing songs at the moment. Let's fucking, let's just try and do it. So we went to a, a big label. We wrote a pop song. We wrote two fucking pop songs. I hated it. I yeah, and the song. Mate, it's a quality pop song as well. Talk about in the fucking box. Like, you stick that shit on, you listen to it once, and you're humming that tune for the rest of the fucking night. <laughs> but it's horrible. But it's horrible, yeah. It's like, I don't want to call it music like that. And we'd listen to it back, like, on headphones or in a hotel room when they, they sent the mix back, and you like, and then it gets to the chorus, and you're like, Burr, burr, burr. Is that burr. So we, yeah, we, we spoke to the, the last guys we were working with and we were just like, yeah, I know we don't have any money and I know that we really need to like, we need an investment, but not like this, please. Like, there's got to be another way. Yeah. We can just hold on a little bit longer. We really believe in manifestation, creating your own future. And we really believed and forced our minds into the positive attribute that it is possible to find a harmonious relationship in the music industry. Yeah. No matter how ridiculous that is, we really believed it. And after all the major labels are sniffing around, it's a cool time in your life where people are like, 
You want to jump on this boat? You can get across really quick. And you're like, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe I want to swim with someone. Mm. And so we didn't jump in the boat. Um, what a fucking choice. It sounded like Hey Moon Shaker because he taught me to beatbox and I'm teaching him to play guitar. So yeah, it would just be a shit version of what it is now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah, hey, no worries. Great. Real pleasure. Yeah.